Senhor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to uh, welcome Adrian this morning, who's going to take our uh, service this morning because Charles is now on paternity leave. The baby's due any time, so we'll uh, hope for good things. I'll just give a few notices out. I want to say thank you to everyone who helped yesterday at the coffee morning, which was for, uh, we, we did it for Macmillan. I'm not sure how much money there is at the moment, how much we raise. There are some more donations to come in, so we'll get a, a proper total and then give out what, uh, what the total was next week, probably. All the, um, the notices are on the, um, the notice sheet. I'd like to just say that, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, week on Tuesday, we're hoping to have a meeting to discuss the Christmas fair. 
So if anybody wants to come and do that, well, it's Christine and myself. If you, you get in touch with us after, after the service, we'll have a little talk to you. Uh, it's Burton Hastings. For, for, uh, we're celebrating Harvest Festival at Burton Hastings tonight. It's a lovely service. They decorate the church absolutely beautifully. So everybody's welcome to that. And then tomorrow, they auction off the produce. And if you've not been, it's really, really good. They have a proper auctioneer from Rugby who does the, uh, the cattle and all the animals. And he's, he, he talks in that, that speed. You know, it's a real good experience. So even if you don't want to buy anything, I think it's, um, it's, it starts at half past seven, doesn't it, Penny? Yeah. yeah. He does. He does. You, do, you don't have to. He's a proper auctioneer. If you move, he just say, say it. Okay, well, I'll let you carry on then. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I can better that introduction, so let us begin. Uh, I welcome you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us begin our, with our first hymn as the Deer Pants, number 45. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. And so we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be. 
that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now sing the Gloria together. Please be seated for our first reading. The first reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Then, the Lord, then God spoke the, all, all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in on, on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not, court, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled, and stood at a distance, and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The second lesson is taken from Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but the one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power on her, of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. stand for our next hymn, I Dance in the Morning.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated him in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone who on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Please be seated. Sisters and brothers, may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If when you think of Jesus, you have a mental image of a gentle Jesus sitting, telling heart-warming parables to his adoring followers in the shade of an olive tree, think again. The passage we have just heard comes from a point in Matthew's Gospel, where if you read it in the context, the tension which has been quickly ramping up It has become unbearable, and the climax of the greatest story ever told is about to incur. The scene has already been set for a confrontation with the powers that be. Which powers was not always obvious? Would it be the hated Romans, the occupiers? Many hope so. What was always clear is that the end would come in Jerusalem, the holy city, So at the start of chapter 21, it's festival time in Jerusalem. The roads to the city are full of crowds flocking to celebrate the Passover. Just before he enters the city, Jesus warns his followers in the preceding chapter. We are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. They will condemn him to death. But rather than seeking to avoid that fate by slipping in unnoticed... Jesus makes a hugely public statement by arriving on a donkey. Cheered by palm-waving crowds who understood, just as the Pharisees did, that in doing so he was fulfilling the prophet Zechariah's words about the arrival of a king. Then, as if that wasn't enough of a challenge to the powers that be, Jesus turns up the volume. He enters the temple, overturns the tables of the money changers, and accuses those responsible for running the temple and making it a den of thieves. Pandemonium ensues. The place is soon full of the blind and the lame seeking healing, and children making a noise. No wonder the chief priests responsible for the holiest site in Judaism were scandalized. And no wonder Jesus slipped away and slept the night out of the city in the safety of Bethany. The next morning, things start again. 
Walking back to the city, Jesus sees a fig tree by the side of the road and curses it for not bearing fruit. It wasn't the right season anyway, but Jesus has a thing about bearing fruit. Then, the day after he created a disturbance in the temple, he goes there again. The chief priests are waiting for him, no doubt furious with him. They challenged his authority to do what he has done. So after telling one vineyard story, he tells them this one, our gospel reading today. He doesn't pull any punches. It's less of a parable than an allegory. God is the landowner and Israel is the vineyard. And the tenant farmers are not the Jewish people, as some have said in the past. They are the religious elite, the leaders of the religious establishment. In other words, exactly the chief priests, the scribes and the Pharisees who Jesus is standing in front of. The servants in this story are those who are sent to collect the fruit, are the great prophets of Israel's history. And then Jesus hits them with it. He is the son. He is the son in the story who is killed by the tenant farmers. The religious leaders are not stupid. They get it. They want to arrest him, but they fear the crowd. But we know that Jesus' fate is sealed. Like the son in the story, he will be taken. And he will be taken away and killed. And he has just warned them that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. Like the fig tree, the religious leaders in Jerusalem are cursed because they don't produce the fruit of the kingdom of God. Jesus really cares about the fruit. Now, it would be easy for us to be smug at this point. The Jewish religious leaders had failed, and so the vineyard was open to us, the followers of Jesus Christ and the people of his kingdom. Our hands are clean. Except for this, Jesus really cares about the fruit. And in the story, he says that the vineyard will go to those who produce fruit, who care about the harvest. He wants to see fruit. And if we distance ourselves from this story by seeing it as only being about the Pharisees who failed to recognize Jesus, then we miss the point for ourselves. If we, Christ followers, are the vineyard's new tenants, aren't we to produce fruit? Are we harvesting the fruit of witness and compassion, of making the love of God known? Do we display the fruit of the Spirit, what Paul de describes in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? John's Gospel tells us that Jesus described himself as the true vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. What is Jesus asking of us? What Jesus asking, sorry, what Jesus is asking of us is not necessarily to be successful in our own terms. I'm reminded of a great father of a missionary movement, a man by the name of William Carey. He took the gospel afresh to India in the 18th century. For many, many years, he didn't make a single convert, but he was faithful. And it was through his faithfulness that a movement started that is still bearing fruit today. What God wants from us is the faithfulness that comes from abiding in him, from spending time with him in prayer, in immersing ourselves in his word, and in worship and fellowship as members of the body of Christ. He wants us to abide in him, because to abide in him leads to fruitfulness. Let us finish with a prayer. May God bless you as in the daily walk of faith you abide in him and through the Holy Spirit at work. May we bear fruit in your life and the lives of those around you to the glory of God our Father in heaven. Amen.
Let us stand as we declare our faith in God. And so we say together, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit as we hear our intercessions. Lord, you have called us to know you. You have called us to love you. You have called us to serve you. Make us worthy of your calling. Help us to proclaim your power and your peace. Help us to rejoice in your light and in your love through Christ the living Lord. We pray for churches that are under persecution churches at work in dangerous and dark places. We pray for churches who have lost their vision, for all who seek to bring the light of Christ to others, that we may all grow in holiness and in faith. We pray this morning especially for countries torn apart by war and turmoil, and especially Israel, Palestine, and the Ukraine. We pray for all those who are struggling for survival, those who rely on food banks to exist, those who li whose lives have collapsed around them, those sleeping on the streets of our towns and cities, for those who have lost hope and willpower. We pray for the church here in Bulkington, for our friends in the Catholic, Methodist and Congregational churches. We ask for your blessing on Charles, Emma, Rowan and Rob, particularly in the coming weeks. We pray this week for those who live and work in Oakham Crescent, the Paddocks and Ribble Close. We remember in our prayers those who are brought low by disease or sickness for those who have recently been diagnosed, undergone surgery, and those who are terminally ill. This morning we think of Paul Towers, Margaret Wykes, Josie Bayliss, June Quinney, Maggie Harris, Sheila Pike, Carol Cross, Dorothy Thomas, Margaret Powney, Holly and Matt, Gareth and Liz Jones. Lord, look down on those named and any others known to us. Give them peace in their hours of need. We pray for the hospice movement and those who care for the dying. We pray for all those who have died recently. We think of the loved ones left behind Give them strength to overcome their overwhelming grief and loss of someone they have loved as they struggle to put their lives back together. Lord Jesus, teach us not to serve ourselves, but others. Not to seek our own ends, but your will. And so may all we are and all we do bring glory to your name. Merciful Father, accept Sentry these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
we meet together to share Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord is here. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper had ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
invited to come to the Lord's table, all those who love Jesus and want to commune closer with him.
So let us say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn, Sing We of the Blessed Mother, number 605. Just before I pronounce the blessing, um, I'm going to read uh, the bands. We, Laura Bridges, single of St. James Badsley, Badsley with Adlington, 
know all things, all in two, sorry. Um, and John Christopher Priest, single at St. James Barkington. This is for the second time of asking if anybody knows any reason in law why these sh two should not get married, then you must declare it now. So let's bow our heads and pray for Laura and John. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of marriage and we ask for your blessing on Laura and John and ask that you would help them in their preparation for their marriage, but also uh, the marriage of uh, wedding day, but also for their married life together. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so the blessing, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you and all whom you love his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do you remember what the closing words are? Do you remember what?